Hello, Kidney Warriors! James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And it's Friday, June 3rd, and you know what? I was sitting here thinking, you know what be fun? I'm gonna go live. Let's hang out together this Friday. My kids were out playing, not doing anything. And let's chit chat together. So this is a great opportunity. It's just all of us, those of you that support Dadvice TV, you know, by subscribing or getting a YouTube membership, you are the ones that help me stay online, keep things going. So I thought, hey, let's hang out together as some appreciation. And we've got, hey, look at this, Minnesota, awesome. Mary, great to see you. Oh, my dad's here. <laughs> hey, dad. So I'm guessing my mom's probably there also. Uh, we got Darlene from down in Georgia. Boy, Darlene, I bet you it's pretty hot there because here in Cincinnati, whoo, we got us a lot of sunshine and a lot of heat. All right. So um, I don't have a topic to talk about tonight, but if you guys have questions, feel free to ask the questions. We're just going to hang out here. I'm going to share my opinion. Of course, I'm not a doctor, can't diagnose anybody. Um... Oh, look at this, New Jersey. And as many of you know, I am working on moving. I'm I'm relocating for my job. So I have spent the last week, there's not been very many shows um, for the last probably two months, I've kind of cut back because I have been so busy house hunting. Well, trying to first figure out what city to live in because I'm moving up to Michigan. And for work, I work in Dearborn, Michigan, just outside Detroit. But here's some cool things. I've got to get me all new doctors. And what I'm going to do, we've had shows on here with Jen and with other doctors talking about how to interview a doctor, how to pick a really good doctor and build a great healthcare team. Well, when I go and I hunt for doctors, I'm going to bring my camera and I'm going to get their permission. I'm going to say, hey, doc. I want to talk to you, uh, you know, some questions, interview you, and I want to document so I can share it with other people so that you can see the types of questions that I ask doctors while I'm building out my um, healthcare team. And look at this, we already got us a great question here. And I don't want to butcher your name. So if I mispronounce your name, type it in there and I'll correct it. Um, Ola, I'm going to take a guess on that. She asks, what can I eat? Well, Ola, I have fantastic news for you. It's not really what can I eat. Um, first of all, every person's different, and we need to look at our labs, our health, um, our lifestyle, what we're doing, how active we are, and the best way to figure out how much of which foods to eat, and really that's what it comes down to is how much of which foods is to not do it alone, work with a dietitian. They're gonna look at your labs and everything else. They're gonna give you like allowances. They're gonna say, okay, you gotta have at least this much sodium. We need sodium, but don't get more than this. So they're gonna give you a range and they're gonna give you for sodium, they're gonna give you for potassium, for protein, fiber, all super important fiber. We never talk about it enough, but they're gonna give you all these allowances. And then you use any of the free phone tracking apps. I use Chronometer, and there's a link to it on dadvicetv.com if you wanna see the one I use. But any of those free apps should provide you just what you need, and when you're going to eat, you go in there and you put the food in there and you see how much of your allowance it's eating up. And you get to decide, ooh, if I eat this avocado, a whole avocado, I'm using up a lot of my daily allowance for potassium, uh, but tonight I wanted to have something else that had some potassium in it. So maybe you eat less avocado, or you say, you know what, I'm not gonna add the avocado to my salad because I wanna save my potassium for my meal later tonight. So that helps you to pretty much eat anything and then it comes down to portion control. Now the unhealthy foods, they're gonna be loaded with sodium and so many bad things that a small amount is about all you're gonna be able to fit into your diet. And it may be the point where you're like, you know what, if I eat that, I can have you know, a half a Big Mac, just as an example, okay? Uh, if I eat that, I can't have dinner. 
is that half a Big Mac really worth it? No. So then you start looking at more healthier foods. Automatically, you're like, you know what? I can eat a whole bunch of broccoli. I can have some of that dip for it. I can put some seasoning on it. I'm also going to have some cauliflower. And then I can have this other stuff for dinner. All of a sudden, when you start picking healthier foods, those use up less of your allowances and you're eating more and more and more of them. And you're having these great, colorful, healthy meals. So that's the best way to look at what can I eat. And there are lists. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. There's really two things that all kidney patients need to be very careful with. One is star fruit. It has a neurotoxin that healthy kidneys remove from a person's body. And in my opinion, we probably shouldn't even be selling those at the at the supermarket uh, because so many people don't realize that they have kidney issues. And the other one is black licorice. Now, black licorice, it's just if you can have too much of it. And it isn't that much to get too much. Other than that, the food restrictions just come down to, you know, you may have a medication that you can't have pineapple juice with the pill, but you can take the pill and then have pineapple juice hours later. Um, those kind of warnings or uh, restrictions will be printed on the label or your pharmacist will tell you. But it really does just come down to, to portion control. So you can eat almost anything. So for example, say you want a piece of cake, you're gonna go out and celebrate. Well, there's a lot of sugar in there. So it's gonna eat up a lot of your sugar allowance. And if you're diabetic, your allowance is a little bit smaller, uh, but you can fit that little bit of cake in there and not feel guilty. Now, you'll wanna you know, fill up on some healthier things to make up for that. But that approach right there, it's, it's kind of a modern approach. And once I learned that, once my dietitian and my doctor got me to understand that I was like holy cow you mean I can eat anything I want and they're like yeah as long as you get your minimums and don't go over your maximums you can eat anything you want in there um, and it just kind of self takes care of itself and it doesn't mean you're going to be starving I still stick within my limits and I don't count calories and I gain weight so you can still eat quite a bit when you're eating healthy, um, it's not unlimited. You don't get to have unlimited of all these things just because they're considered healthier. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helped answer your question. We got Catherine here from New York. Uh, someone says you give me hope in dark times. Oh, I appreciate hearing that. I'm glad for your support. Living with kidney disease, it, it can really, it, it, it weighs heavy on your shoulders and on your mind, especially when you allow yourself to kind of think about, you know, the um, what ifs, you know, what if this? So for example, I'm relocating up to Michigan in a couple months. Uh, I started a new job. The company I was with went under last year. So I had a break, <laughs> forceful break, also called unemployment for a little bit. Um, you know, things kind of could seem dark if you focus on the negatives. Um, and that's completely normal. And what's, what has helped me is first of all, you focus on, you find the positive things in life, like, especially if you have kids or something like that, you focus on those and you set yourself goals that are achievable and you work towards those goals and you celebrate those achievements. So, um, those right there have helped me and having a support group, like all of you guys out there. That is great. I, I'm high energy. I'm super happy. But sometimes you get, you know, all of us have those down days. Where we're like, oh, things aren't going too well. You know, looking for houses. There were days where I'm like, oh, how the heck am I going to afford to buy a house while I still have a house and all these other things and moving and arranging it? Where am I going to get the time? It just kind of, it can make things feel kind of dark. And you got your kidneys you got to worry about. And like, ah, I'm supposed to be exercising more, losing more weight. I got to go see the doctor, get my labs. Um, but we all, we're here to support each other. We can get through these, these tough times or these dark times. Um, and just reach out to, to someone here if you need a little bit of help, a little bit of support, a little bit of a ray of sunshine in your life. Um, I love the quote. Even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise. Comes from Les Mis, one of my absolute favorite 
live, I guess, Broadway plays or something, whatever it is. Um, loved it. I loved that line for the moment I heard it. Someone asked, can we eat rice? Yes. Um, rice can be a part of everyone's diet. It's, again, it's going to come down to what you're eating overall. Um, you got to eat healthy. You got to eat balanced. Um, white rice a lot of people eat. I eat brown rice. One of the things that I, I kind of hinted to it a little bit earlier today, but we don't talk about is fiber. And I love the brown rice and, well, my favorite one. You guys, has anyone heard the rice that I talk about that I absolutely love? It's baked in Korea, and I used to go to Korea a lot for work. Let's see if anyone in the comments can remember what kind of rice I love. It's got lots of fiber and lots of nutrients. But yes, we can eat rice. It can be part of our diet. We just got to look at how does it fit in and how much can we have. And that's where a dietitian really helps. Or I didn't see anyone mention what kind of rice it is, but it is purple rice. Now, you may not have heard of purple rice. As a matter of fact, a long time ago, it was reserved for royalty. You know, like the purple colors were a lot for royalty. Purple rice, you can get at a lot of Korean restaurants. Um, it's got fiber and so many vitamins. And I love the flavor of it. It actually has flavor. And yes, it is purple. It's a, a very nice, bright purple. All right, let's see. We got a couple other questions in here. Um, yeah, some people were saying, yeah, portion control. Portion control is key to all of our food. All of it is portion control. Um, Catherine said, itchiness, is it kidney problems related? So it could be. They're a very common symptom of kidney disease. And this is when your kidneys are really close to failing. You've got a very low kidney function. If your uh, phosphorus gets too high, it actually sucks calcium out of your bones and it gets deposited along the, your skin and it causes these bumps and itchiness, an itchiness that doesn't go away. But just because you have kidney issues and you have itchiness does not mean you got too much phosphorus. So check with your doctor. Um, there are creams you can put on to mask and temporarily relieve the itchiness, but let your doctor know so they can find out what the cause is. You may have an allergy to a food, a medication, maybe a detergent, something else may be causing it. And you wanna find the root cause so you're not constantly putting on cream just to cover up and deal with the symptom of the itchiness. You wanna find that underlying cause so you can get rid of it. Um, Lean asks, well, I wanna know the top three things to increase GFR and decrease creatinine. Oh, and protein in the urine. Okay, we're gonna to get to do more than three, but it's a short list, probably like five things. If creatinine goes down, your GFR goes up. It, it, those two are related. It Creatinine is what is used to estimate your GFR. Now, creatinine is not bad. It is completely normal. It's created by your muscle. Every time your heart beats, some creatinine is created. Every time you breathe, when you move your muscles, when you're moving, uh, just being alive, you're creating creatinine. Now, the kidneys usually keep it at an extremely low number, but if it gets slightly, slightly higher, that indicates that, hey, your kidneys are not working well. So they use the creatinine in your blood as an estimate of your kidney function. But creatinine really has nothing to do with your kidney function. For example, if you're in an accident and your legs are amputated, your creatinine will go down, but your kidneys did not just suddenly start getting better you have less muscle because you don't have any legs. They were, they were removed. So don't get too focused on creatinine. Now, what you can do is you can, you know, try to live healthy, do what you can with your doctor. And the most important things, get your blood pressure under control. That it may take medication and the medications can reduce protein leakage. ACEs and ARBs are great at reducing and maybe even eliminating protein leakage. And we've had a lot of conversations with Dr. Rosansky on here about that. Another way to reduce protein leakage, it may be similar to mine. Um, I had a lot of inflammation in my kidneys. There was damage, I wasn't eating right when I got diagnosed. 
And I did a whole bunch of things, but I also, um, after not being able to get rid of all the protein in my urine, we did an allergy test because I still had some inflammation in my kidneys from the ultrasounds and discovered a few things that I was allergic to. One of them, which I did not know, was soy. I'm one of those few people that has an allergy to soy and so much food that's healthy or sold as healthy, uh, vegetarian food contains soy. So I eliminated soy and boom, that was what was needed to get my inflammation down and my protein in the urine went away. I show zero every time I get a test and it's been over three years now at no protein. I started adding some soy in because there's a lot of great things that contain soy and I'm still at zero and I haven't gone crazy. I'm not sitting there watching Netflix and eating edamame, which I used to love to eat. Those are, those are soybeans. Um, so I'm being very careful with how often I eat soy, but you want to get your blood pressure under control. And there's a good chance that if your kidney functions lower, you may even see a boost in it. Uh, once your blood pressure is under control. If you have high blood or uh, if your blood sugar is out of control, you need to get that under control. Now, one of the things with blood sugar, the damage to your kidneys is permanent, okay, even from high blood pressure. But if you get your blood pressure under control, you might see a boost in your kidney function in your labs. Um, from my experience in talking to doctors, and remember, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a super nerd. Um, once you get your blood sugar under control, you don't typically see a boost in your kidney function, but you can stop the damage and then you can hold and holding is great. I'm holding, my kidneys are crap, but I'm holding and I have no symptoms, I am fine. Um, I could stay like this for 40 years and be perfectly fine and die of something else when I'm much, much older. Um, so, you know, if you are diabetic, your blood sugar is out of control or not controlled, it's good to control it. Exercise, extremely important to your body, your heart, and your kidneys. Um, they say five days a week, 30 minutes a day. There's a new study called the 90 plus, people who live 90 years or older that's going on right now. And what they have discovered is that 45 minutes a day seems to be the ideal amount of exercise. It does not have to be all at once. It doesn't have to be really tough like running. It could be gardening, walking doing all sorts of things, but getting 45 minutes of activity a day seems to be the ideal amount of exercise for our health and our longevity. It even did better than people who exercised longer, which is fantastic. I'm able to fit 45 minutes in a day. I use my Apple Watch to let me know when I need to exercise and how much I have. And if I you know, getting late at night, I pop on my VR headset. I'm out there, Beat Saber music. I'm jumping around, moving, exercising, getting my heart going. That is another thing that will help you improve your overall health and help you with your kidneys. Um, eating right, eating healthy. Don't try to do it alone. It's We all wanna say, yeah, I can go on the internet, I can figure out everything and I can eat it. No, we can't. I'm a super nerd, I thought I could. No, I couldn't. I got with a dietitian, only took a couple meetings, and boom, I was on a great road to success. A dietitian is going to help you figure out that minimum you need, the maximum not to succeed for all your key nutrients, and they're going to help you with fiber. Fiber is unfreaking believable. Um, we all got to get, most of us probably got to get more fiber. Now, there are other things that you can take. Um, you know, I take Renadil, it's a probiotic. Um, for you guys, most of you, I don't even know if you need that. Talk to your renal dietitian. I do take Pro Renal Plus D. This is a renal multivitamin designed for kidney patients. I take two of these every day. I have taken these since right after I was diagnosed. Love the company, great people. I can call them and say, you know what? I want to get a doctor on here to talk about stuff. Boom, they'll call around, they'll get me a doctor. I take these. It helps me make sure that I get all the nutrients that I may not get since I'm kind of limiting my diet. All right, so hopefully that kind of helps you on some things you can do. Be active, get your blood pressure under control, eat better, kind of live healthy. All right, um, let me see what else we have in there. Is there anything we can do to stop peeing as much as at night? Oh my goodness, I wish I could tell you what to do. I Last night, I did not get up once. 
And then it's probably a once a month thing. And when I wake up, I realize I'm like, oh, I did not get up at all last night. I slept the entire night. That's great. I wish I, I had some suggestions. I'll ask Dr. Rosansky. He's going to be back here on the 14th. I'll ask him um, what he recommends to help us kind of get those longer nights of sleep. Because I get up at least once, usually twice, to go to the bathroom at night. Someone says, thank you for all the informative videos. It's helped me a lot. Oh, I'm great to hear that. Um, when I started out, I was so bad at these, especially when I had guests on. I was constantly interrupting them and talking over them. And I've kind of learned from time to get better and better at these videos. Um, says, what do I think about this type of fiber right here? Um, when it comes to fiber, I try to get as much of it from food as I can. Apples lots of apples um when i when i reach for a snack it might be almonds or pecans or sunflower seeds because they've got fiber in them i also have these wraps these high fiber low carb wraps that i use instead of bread 11 grams of fiber in one of those i now start every morning off with a bowl a small bowl um, of oatmeal it's just one little packet of this high fiber oatmeal it's quick and easy to make 11 grams of fiber right there in that. So I'm getting my 30 to 35 grams of fiber that I need every day. So I would say, talk to your doctor. If you're having trouble getting that fiber in with the regular food, ask what ones they recommend if you're gonna take a supplement. In the beginning, I was using Benefiber and I absolutely loved it. I'll sprinkle it on everything. Everything I drank, I added Benefiber to it. So. That was how I was getting fiber as I was weaning myself off of my bad habits. And it took me a while to get off of my bad habits. Um, so I use supplements for the fiber. And now I, I don't. I take, um, I get it all in my food. I look for high fiber food because I know how important it is. And for me, if I hit 35 grams of fiber, which is pretty much was recommended, um, that's my minimum. Uh, there was a point when I was at my sickest, my doctors worked me up. It wasn't overnight, but they worked me up to about 50 grams of fiber a day when I was at my worst um, to help me as I was trying to get rid of toxins and, and start eating better, learning how to do that. Look, we got so many great comments and questions in here. Any advice on sample meal plans for one day? I need something to follow. Okay, P teach. So that one's a tough one because we all are different. So in the morning, I have for me, and my GFR floats around 30, high 20s, low 30s, just right in there. Uh, my BUN still a little high. It's in the low 30s. It needs to get under 30. I do have a problem with my uric acid right now. Um, keep upping my medication. I think where I'm at now will get me in the right number, but my uric acid which causes gout, um, has been extremely high and it's been coming down slowly. But in the morning, I eat some oatmeal because I want to get my fiber. So it's just one packet, this high fiber, the Quaker Oats guy. Uh, it's it's processed. It is, it is processed. It's highly processed food. There are healthier options, but it's quick for me. I get up in the morning. got to get the kids ready for school. I tear open the packet, put it in my little bowl, fill the packet up to the line with water, boom, mix it, microwave for a minute and 40 seconds, stir it. I sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on it. I might add a little craisins, some craisins to it, just give a little bit of variety, but I have that every morning. Then on lunch, it's usually a salad. Um, I do like those pre-packaged salads. There's a brand that starts the T Thompson or something like that. I like theirs. You got to look on the back, be careful for sodium and sugar. Some of those dressings are just crazy on sugars. Um, I love balsamic vinaigrettes. There may be a packet that I buy that has a really bad dressing in it. I'll just throw some balsamic vinaigrette or a strawberry vinaigrette or something like that on it instead that I have in the fridge. Um, I buy dressings that are refrigerated because they have less preservatives. It means less phosphorus typically. So I'll buy those to use for myself. And these salads, you might be thinking, oh, they kind of get expensive buying those prepackaged salads. 
what I do is about every other day we're grocery shopping and I look for the ones that are on clearance that are that have been marked down. So they're like a dollar twenty nine for a salad. Like, hey, that's my lunch for a dollar twenty nine. That's awesome. We gotta save the money because we're paying for health care and all the other stuff that comes along with it. So I'll have a salad for lunch. I might add some diced um, almonds or sunflower seeds. I had some kind of a nut to it. I also like to um, either for lunch, I'll add to the salad some broccoli or I'll have the broccoli for dinner. For dinner, I love those steamed frozen vegetable bags. You got the broccoli, you got the cauliflower, you got the carrots, you got the mixtures, you got so many different things. You can throw them in the microwave because right now we're, we're packing, we're moving. For you guys, you see everything the same. You still, that's my work computer behind me, but everything back here, it's gone. It's all gone. And there are boxes, so many boxes. Our driveway has a giant moving thing in it that we're loading up with stuff. Um, so pretty much there's no kitchen right now. It's all a mess. I have a microwave and an air fryer. Um, I will you know, steam some vegetables for dinner and a variety of them. I love adding spices to the vegetables or I'll throw them in the, the air fryer. I might um, make up some chicken, like a chicken breast. That's very common. So you get those big, I, food costs are ridiculous right now. Things have just gotten so expensive. So I buy those big giant bags of the breast cutlets. So they're kind of smaller. Throw those in the air fryer for like 16 minutes. Maybe put some lemon on it, a little pepper or some other spice, maybe some Italian dressing or some one of my dressings on it. Um, and I have some chicken with some vegetables for dinner. Now, if I have my sweet tooth, and I'm like, oh, I really want something. I have a little bit of sherbet. Not very much sherbet. Um, sherbet's very affordable. And it's not too bad. It's not like ice cream. And then, of course, I'm drinking lots of water throughout the day. Now, my challenge, and I know it's a challenge for a lot of you, is... Um, snacking throughout the day i gotta be careful the kids are now out of school today was their last day so they're gonna leave things around and they do that and oh i you know i have my dad tax i gotta stop myself from it where you see something you're like oh there's one nugget left don't want to throw that away i'll have that one nugget and you're like oh oh there's an oreo left ah, i shouldn't have an oreo but it's only one all of a sudden, these things add up. That's what I got to be careful with. Um, <laughs> I see someone, oh, Lean says, they never tell you anything until it's too late. Mm, oh, that's so, I hear that so often. Um, the challenge with kidney disease is it is silent. And many people who have been diagnosed have gone back and looked at their labs. Because, you, you know, a lot of them are online and they've discovered, <gasps> I had kidney disease for eight years. My doctor never said anything. Um, a lot of them were trained that way, not to mention it because there's not a lot that they've been trained to do. The old way was just let your kidney function go down, you know, use medication, control your blood pressure and stuff like that. They could, and then, you know, dialysis was there, but now we've learned so much and so much progress has been made where dietitians are now being, used a lot more and the earlier you find out something um the the sooner you can take action sorry right there i've got a bunch of texts coming through from my wife about the kids <laughs> um hold on one second um i'm gonna let me answer this this text right here all righty um anyway a lot of doctors do wait a while to let people know. Um, you wish I, someone said they wish I was a doc. Let me tell you, I feel like I've become a doctor talking to all of them and I've learned so much and understand so much, which is crazy. Um, a Abby, great to have you here, A Abby. Thank you so much for coming back here. Uh, loves apples. Hey, a Abby, did you try that one I talked about that tastes like caramel? I remember you asked about it. Uh, it was one of the, this was probably like a month or two ago, there's an apple that I swear, when you bite into it, you can taste caramel, like a thin layer of caramel. It is absolutely incredible. Yeah, blueberries, another fantastic thing. 
Um, my challenge with blueberries and strawberries is the cost, and my kids absolutely love them. I could buy a big old tray of blueberries, they'll be gone within 24 hours easily. My kids absolutely love those. Another great snack. Uh, and what a snack with blueberries and other fruits is take yogurt, go find a low sugar yogurt that you like. And this is something I learned from renal dietitian Jen Hernandez for plant powered kidneys. Take a tray, like a baking tray, put down some wax paper, make a layer of the yogurt, throw all your vegetables in it on it, or not vegetables, your, you know, like blueberries, strawberries and all that. Put it in the freezer, freeze it. You pull it out, you crack it, you smash it on the table. Boom, you got you a great little snack. All right. Um, so it says, I think I got lucky this year. You've got a good nephrologist. Fantastic. Congratulations. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Wow. And a half hour has already gone by. <laughs> All righty. Um, well, I am I am so glad you guys all stopped by. I actually only had half an hour for tonight and I didn't think there'd be this many people showing up, but I did wanna thank all of you for all of your support, helping Dad Vice TV grow by subscribing to the YouTube channel um, or by having a YouTube membership. That helps cover the cost of the hosting and the streaming and all the software licenses and all that stuff. Um, I really appreciate all of you. I'm going to do more of these, especially as I'm getting ready to pack things up and move. Uh, maybe I'll start doing these like on Saturday mornings so we can come on live for an hour. I'm hoping also to invite a few other people unofficially, uh, get some other kidney warriors on here, and we can kind of just hang out together and talk about things. But that's pretty much the end of my time for tonight. So I hope this was helpful for a lot of you. It was great getting to hang out here. Have a great summer. Have a fantastic and safe weekend. And I will be back here. I'll, I'll probably jump on again for one of these before the next scheduled show. But uh, there's no shows this week. And I can't remember if there's any next week. Kind of thinning things out because I'm getting all ready for the move on oh, am says thank you for the half hour James. thank you so much all right everybody you all have a great weekend and i'll see you all in the next video bye everyone